All right, this is it. The uh, second or third chapter of the whole Redford adventure. Uh, this video was shot in uh, October. Uh, I'm basically kind of explain why I was gone in September and whatnot. And really, all these videos, I realized there's really maybe two more chapters left. One with all the videos shot up to about December, and then there's about a loose bunch of loose projects after December. Um, this one just sort of goes on about why I was gone and what I was up to. Howdy folks. Welcome to Kitchen Table Folk Art Chapter 13 Plus. So now that so, yeah. um, you watch rewatch those videos, I realized that during the summer, um, some of the concepts and things that we got in trouble over, I, didn't, I would say we got in trouble over, people just sort of critiqued us was you know, what I realized is when you broadcast uh, on YouTube, it goes over to Google, and if you identify town names, uh, towns get pissed off. And there's always some civic or civil city person who wonders what the hell you're doing with their town name. And uh, we got a couple comments about that. Uh, we bought a bottle of tequila for like $18. It was fucking steel. So, I'm back, back in action. Another thing was the park, or you know, dealing with the park people. And so, if we were labeling the park and going up and walking around, uh, people, the park folks were sort of curious as to what we we're up to. And I uh, made a couple of drunken videos about tampering with the desert and all this crap like that, you know. Uh, the other controversy we got into was the uh, town of Redford's name in this Indian tribe that once established itself here and uh, the people who guard the Redford name very sacredly and they saw us as these two white boys coming here appropriating the name and we didn't have the privilege to even utter the name Redford in these contexts because it was destroying the impression of the town you know too late for the devil blanky blank the Damnation is all my own. Uh, I had to explain this a lot when I was in Mark. Well, um, yeah, when the town, there was a couple of activists that, really Indian activists, that took our use of the word Redford and shooting here as a, uh, it was kind of like a, a battle over who, what was the identity of the town. And to me, you know, I always thought, well, this is, this is sort of a silly argument. So I, I always get really uh, worried, or you get if you're meeting anybody who talks about what the impression of things are, or what's the what are the meaning, or what do the children think, or what's the uh, I don't know, when you have characters who are really engaging things politically, they're really just out to control what you say and do, and that you, what you say and do has these consequences. And they always over exaggerate these consequences as if it's going to destroy the fabric of the town because. I'm sitting there playing with nacho cheese out in the desert, you know, and uh, they over, you know, I used to get in all kind of arguments about this stuff. Called Wonder Shows. He did this one cartoon called Potty. Well, one of the arguments here's just typical type of the arguments I'd get in around here is when Justin's dog got killed. I, you know, he put that video up. I uh, ask him, people, was it okay to have this video up? Was it going to give the impression that for some reason the town of Redford had a rash of dog killings? You know. And some guy said, yeah, that's true. And I said, well, no, it's not. I said, well, it's news. It's just things that happen. No one takes this stuff that seriously. And you have to realize something. A lot of people, when they, the people are all into reputation or impression or what's the meaning of this or what are you suggesting, they always assume the worst. They really come at the situation as if what you do is going to corrupt and destroy everything. He's buried somewhere in the damn desert, and i got to go find it. I've been studying his videos, and... Trying to figure out where exactly it is, but I'm gonna get the fucking money. We'll get it back. It's not his. And uh, he's been like a little, basically like a little bitch, basically, since I've been gone. And he got really excited because <coughs> apparently, <coughs> apparently something else happened when I was gone. And you know, Justin, he, Justin's trying to be a Christian, you know, and he has these very strong virtues, but apparently, uh, I don't know if y'all remember, but back in the uh, couple of the videos before, I ended up meeting this girl over at Marfa called Ruby, that one that pulled up there. Well, well Ruby 
this this girl I shot her. I sent her a, a letter. And I got this letter back from her, you know, and I surrounded her somewhere. But it was this letter about how she was kind of like wanting somewhere to go and hang out. And uh, I had my return address on it, and lo and behold, before I got back here, she ended up moving here. You know, I think she's kind of a she's kind of a I don't know what the hell she does to be honest with you, but she's sort of a transient type person and rental properties here and uh well <clears throat> one thing you have to realize about being out here and there's a lot of stories of just people who've lived out here and, and uh went away especially with outward bound was here uh, but you know one of the things that's really scenically beautiful and there's not it's just really not very many people around but the ones that are here we always talk about like uh the border patrol there's like this obsession with the border patrol and i guess now homeland security and cops and da and you know, where I'm living is right, right on the border of Mexico. You know, Mexico is not even half a mile away from my house. But it's, it's not in the park area, so it's not, there's no real talent, even on the other side, you know. It's just a lot of farmers. But the, only, but the main obsession is this paranoia that the government is spying on you and that the, the border patrol is, you know, eyeballing you all the time. And uh, I'd always get these kind of impressions from some of the locals and some of the people who visit here. I'll tell you this one interesting story. Uh, well, this one story went about 10 years ago, me and Serge, his buddy of mine, that we, he had another art studio here, and I had mine in that old library, and uh, we were out there one night drinking in the back of his, over his place, and it must have been like 2 in the morning or 1 in the morning, and we're sitting there talking about, you know, Art de Cooney and Bacon and P Picasso, and, and we go outside and we look, and there's a Border Patrol car, like not even, you know, a hell, not even, I don't know, not even a tenth of a mile away just sitting there with one of those monitoring devices. They have these giant ball things on top of their car, and they can, you know, eavesdrop on people's conversations. Well, we knew right then and there that this is some extra level of police protection.